I got the heat shielding, braces, and cats back on. A uh, little easier, somewhat, to connect. Um, you know, it's still kind of tight by the uh, trans mounts. So, left side, I still had to keep the O2 sensor off, slide it up, and then reconnect. Whereas there's a little more room on the uh, right side to keep it connected. The top nut is still a pain in the ass, even without the auto. It doesn't really matter what you have. Um, and another unfortunate thing, well, uh, something to think about. So since the O&E is shorter, you now no longer have mounts for your cats. So I'm going to probably have to fab up some kind of bracket or something just to get, you know, a little support there. It's nice to have. There's these two bosses here. Might be able to do something. I mean, it's a little further forward versus after one cat and before the other. And I've also got the uh, rear O2s hooked up, even though I think my tune technically deletes them. But. And next up is this Super Sprint exhaust. So I bought it off a friend that was part in an S8. He bought the car and it had been sitting for a long time, but it still has the stickers on it. I don't know it was ever run or it must not have run for very long it's still on I mean albeit dusty but so I'm gonna give this a shot see how it sounds see how I like it compared to the one that I fabricated so I'm gonna put this on and I don't know I had hoped that I need to go for a test drive tonight, but it's already 10.30 at night. The uh, axles fought me for a while, and just, I don't know, lots of different things. I still might fire it up tonight, so put the exhaust on and bleed the clutch and the brakes. Might have enough time to do that. Uh, and then just see, well... I guess I gotta put the other ECU so I won't get the clutch switch done, which is fine. That I think it'll still start without it. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So I might I might start it up tonight. I might not. Uh, if I do, I'll take a video. Exhaust is on. Nice. Low profile tips there. A little super sprint logo, if you can see. So, this is going to be it for the night. It's coming up on it's 11 o'clock now, so I have been going at it for 12 hours now. And it's really close. But my body is just beats. So as far as 4th of July, might be able to get a few hours in. Got some family stuff. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I'll wake up early and try and hammer out the rest. So I'm going to bleed the clutch and the brakes. And then see if I can figure out the clutch switch wiring if I need that to fire it up then I will so close but no cigar but hey if I can get it done tomorrow hey that'll be three weeks so not too bad for working mostly weekends with pretty much I don't know, two or three full days so
probably not probably not a three three day weekend like I was thinking. It it kind of depends. Like if you did a lot of the things, like if you did the pedals and you rebuilt, well, I guess rebuilt half the axles and did a few other things, you could probably do it in a long weekend, but it's certainly nice to be able to take your time and not rush. So, all right, see you tomorrow. Welcome back. This is Odd Cylinders Garage. Today is Independence Day. Today, I declare my independence from a computer telling me which gear I should be in. I am getting ready to bleed the brakes and the uh, clutch slave. If you work by yourself a lot or you just want to make your life easy, power bleeder. These things are awesome. Hooks up to your reservoir. One man job. You don't have to have somebody in the cab and pressing the pedal. So, you start with the brakes and then go to the uh, clutch slave. Another handy tool when you're bleeding brakes is this awesome little uh, catcher. So, you just bleed right into this. You don't have to deal with putting out a pan and getting fluid everywhere. This one also has a magnet. So, look ma, no hands. Put it right on the uh, caliper or if you don't have aluminum suspension you can put it on whatever you want whatever is convenient so another tool tip are you tired of pouring oil all over your valve covers that then just let it seep down onto the exhaust and smoke if so you need one of these filter adapter screws right in and you just pour the oil right in there. So it does actually say for Toyota Lexus, but it actually works on Audis and Volkswagens. So I think I think this was actually my buddy Mike that posted this a couple years ago. Um, so great tip from him. And he actually just started a YouTube channel too for old Audis. He's got a 4,000 he's going to be doing a lot of videos on. So check it out. Link maybe here. Mikey's virtual garage. Now time to fill her up and start it. Quick tip on the snub mount reinstall. So notice that the uh, chassis side mount is slotted. So the bolts come in from the bottom. So the way I removed it was just with a stupid long extension um, but trying to get that realigned and and there's washers and then a you know a spacer so it's easiest if you thread one of them slide it into place And now you've already got one started and that'll help keep that guide plate or the, uh, the spacer plate from sliding around. And you might be able to get this outside one uh, started from underneath the headlight. You're probably not going to be able to get the uh, one closest to the radiator except from below. So quick little tip. All right, got the TCU out. Had been sitting over there. I took it off the bracket and then reinstalled the bracket because the bracket holds uh, these fuses in the relay. And just tuck the connector down. Won't be just, won't be reconnecting that. A quick thing about the ECU. So it has these like. Well, mine's mine's been taken off before. So you can't just pop the connector off, it has this cage and it's got these like safety screws and you can see uh, previously had slotted that so then you can take that off with a screwdriver. So you'll need to do that. Um, 
you don't have to do this in the car. There's a couple uh, Phillips screws, black screws, one on each side. That should release the clamp, allow you to, you know, pull this a little further out from underneath the cowl, and then you can slot those. And like, like I have here, I, I only reinstalled one of them. All right, you ready? I'm ready. First start, manual Audi S8. So, yeah, not sure what's rubbing there, but probably just the exhaust or one of the heat shields. Find out. But, other than that, transmission's not making any weird noises. Um, exhaust sounds good. I guess I need to check to see if I have reverse lights. Lights work. And the parking sensor still work because I thought I was trying to reverse them to the wall. So, a few things to check out, but I'm happy. Alright. So hopefully you can see this. I found my problem. So you can there's some wear marks in the uh, The heat shield there and uh, there we go better shot may not be able to see that but anyways um i believe my u-joints are hitting uh, a heat shield so with the new drive shaft since these are serviceable u-joints it looks like they're maybe a little bigger so they are self-clearancing on the heat shield. So uh, I'll need to probably pull off. So it's I don't know, about like right here. So looks like I need to pull off the uh, X pipe or the back half of the exhaust. We'll see. Hopefully I won't be I'll be able to get to it without pulling off too much and then pulling off these heat shields. And then I will uh, re-clearance the bracket. We'll see how bad it is. I don't know if I'll need to cut a hole in it or just grind it down. But other than that, I am really happy. And like I said, Independence Day, baby. No more having a computer tell me what gear to be in. So still have a few more things to, to finish up. You know, like I said, I got to program 
the uh, ESP and brakes. Uh, I've done some of these things, but you know now it's all just kind of odds and ends and just putting things back together. So all right, got the exhaust dropped. So what I thought the drive shaft was rubbing on this is not because the U joints there, of course, but. There's a heat shield. So, this I probably could have easily just, you know, shoved a pry bar in there and clearanced it, but I thought it was the other bracket, so I pulled this off. But we will uh, pound that out and then put that back on. So, that probably isn't a factor of the drive shaft. I don't know. I just. Could be me just bending this heat shield when I was uninstalling it or installing it. Although, I don't know. The U joints do look a little bigger on the new drive shaft, so maybe that is a factor. But, anyways, this will be an easy fix. And then I can uh, get the car ready for a test drive.